Alright guys, this will be the most interesting video of this series. In this video, I'll show you how to work with the stateful visits and the store state. That means data for your application. In past video, we created our data model matching our database, created dummy data JSON files, and now it's the time to pull it all together. That is fetch and consume the data inside our application. So let's create or rather convert our current stateless widget to a stateful widget. But now why would I want to do that? I want to do that because I want to get data from a file or database and then I want to hold on to this data. That means I want to hold on to my state. I want to keep this data and use it or share it in different parts of our application. And actually that's what exactly state is. A state is the information when you want to hold on to some data at some point of time in your app. Uh, I also want to call out that there are a lot more about the states. There are several different methods of storing and sharing state or data inside your application. Uh, there are a lot more advanced design patterns like provider, scout model, Redux, and block patterns, uh, which lets you control and share data within your app. And that's our next topic, uh, which will I will cover the third type of widget, which is called inherited widget. But for now, I want to keep it very simple. And in this video, we'll focus on one thing at a time. We'll only deal with the stateful widget in this app. All right, so let's get started. First thing I want to do here, I want to include a couple of the helper package. First package is the data model. Second package I want to create, you know, have the data convert. So convert is the package delivered by Dalt, which is very helpful when you're working with a JSON file. So after this, let me create the class food home. And I'm just going to extend it, just pretend very similar to stateless class, I'm going to create a stateful widget class. Right now, as you can see, it's complaining because you know there are duplication of the food home, but I will get rid of that later. For now, let me just focus on creating a stateful widget. Now inside a stateful widget, I want to like, you know, you if you want, this is optional, you can declare a variable, say title, and then later on, you know, you can use this variable inside your application. Right now it's giving me the error because it's saying the title is not initialized yet. So let me just initialize that in, inside the constructor. I think that's pretty much it. And now next step is I have to create a state, um, you know, create a state instance of the class. I'm going to name it a food home state. Now make sure, you know, just pay attention. This is an underscore. That means this is a private instance. So now all you need to do, I'm going to, you know, get rid of this, uh, the predefined food home and I'm going to name it as a food home state. Now this extend, this inherited all the properties from a state. A state is another class, which is up type food home. So I hope this is not that confusing. So what do you do? You create a state instance and then you just like you know inheriting uh, inherited to the actual state class so whatever code now i'm going to write i will write inside this my is private state class that's how you create a stateful widget so inside this stateful widget now let's go create a list now this list is of type food menu and uh, i'm just going to give it a name food menu items now in case if you're wondering what this food menu is so let's go to do data model remember we created a data model class called food menu so this is that food menu. So I'm telling that I want a variable food menu items is of type list and every list item will be of the type food menu. Now let's create a method called fetch food menu items. What this method is going to do is going to get the data from the JSON file. So pretend this is a server file, so I'm going to mark it as a future. So again, the future and if this is the method, you know, it's an asynchronous method. Here I'm going to declare a variable data. So root bundle is another function, it's a helper function which helps me load any static JSON file. So remember this mock data.menu JSON file what we created in the last video? Let me show that to you. Okay, so inside that you see mock menu menu uh, data menu uh, dot JSON file. This is has the dummy data. So all I'm doing here, I'm getting the data and storing into a data variable here. Next thing I want to do here, I will call it a JSON.decode method. Again, that method is coming from the convert package. Now I'm going to put this here. I want to mention one thing here. Look at this await. Await means it will not go to the next line until uh, data is finished. So now let's create set state. Now all I need to do inside this set state now. So I'm going to just like have, you know have this web you know food menu items and I'm going to whatever the data I'm getting l dot map. So I'm going to call it a map method here and I will convert that you know. And I'll get it later. Now, there's another helper function from JSON, if you remember. So here I'm deserializing the data. I'm calling the from JSON method on my data type. And uh, uh, this is going to loop over the data what is coming from the server. 
So please, you know, once you get, you know, write this function on your own, you'll understand how it works. But for now, I just want to tell you that you, the, all I did, I cat dot list and I stored that into food menu items. Now my food menu items now I had all the data I need. Okay, perfect. Now I don't know how to get this data, how to load this data. So in the init state is another method inside my stateful widget. All you need to do, declare this function inside the end state and it will take care of that. Now my, you know, whenever the widget will be loaded into the memory, it will have the data. So, you know, food menu items, no pretend whenever the widget is all there, it's, it doesn't have the data. Now, I don't know how to use the data. Remember, like, you know, we wanted to display all of those data values inside my drawer. So, let's go inside the drawer. I'm going to create a child. And uh, uh, my objective is to display all those food menu item value here. So, inside the child, I'm going to include another list view. I'll include a padding to give it a nice look and feel. And inside the children, I want to declare all. Now remember, this is a list. So I, I create another helper function called build drawer. What I'm going to do, build drawer will help me, you know, create a loop and list, display list one by one. So let's create this method. Build drawer is of type list, is going to take the build context, you know, whatever is coming from the server. And then, uh, sorry, not the server. So now I'm going to return food menu items is that, remember this is, this, uh, you know, has, this list has all the data now. So I, all I'm going to do, map it, and I'm going to take each and every item. And then, you know, I'm going to create another widget out of it. So this is just a looping function. This is a for function, okay? It's not doing anything, it's a for loop. Now inside that build drawer list, it takes a value. So food menu, so now it's going to take each and every, json string one at a time and is going to you know return that list style so you know it is going to create that you know list so it's going to create a nice avatar circle avatar image what we discussed in last video and if you you know i just want to show this to you this is the image it will display and again i have included that image into my assets directory already now i want to like include a couple of other items like menu id uh, let me give it a color first okay then, you know, in, I want to just give it a menu type, you know, it's a starter menus or it's a main course or it's a special, things like that. So it's a high level menu type. And then if you want, whatever up to you, if you want to include descriptions or anything you like, uh, give it, you know, just play around with the list style and there are a lot of different ways you can display the information. But for now, I think it's good enough, like, you know, um, I want to include most of the items like menu ID and uh, everything. Right now, I'm not going to make it clickable, so I'm just going to say it's in lull. Later on, we'll fix that, okay? But for now, as you can see, if I go in and compile my application again, uh, I want to show this to you. Um, I hope it compiles good now without any error. So inside this, app you can see is displaying all of those values from my JSON fields okay so I think that's pretty much it now my stateful widget all so let me just recap because you know I I might have a little fast forwarded so what I did first I included a couple of the package in the beginning then I changed my food home class to the stateful widget now all the code what I'm getting the server you know so I created a list of food menu items I created the init state inside the init state I called the JSON file loaded the data into the variable and then all I'm doing, I'm taking that variable and just looping over that variable and displaying one list at a time. So uh, you will, you know, you will end up right. All right, guys, I think this is it for this section. I'm not done yet. In next video, we will work on the other JSON file like submenu items and we are going to fix our navigation.